Have you accepted that getting older or choosing to be an active fit person past your 20s just inevitably means that you're gonna have more aches and pains? Do you feel less able to spring out of bed when you wake up? Or catch yourself in the morning saying things like, oh, I can't do that like I used to. Has your performance ability deteriorated over the course of the past several months, years, or decades? Today's video is gonna challenge the assumption that we should simply accept a certain amount of pain by showing you six ways to take care of the most common movement patterns that lead to joint deterioration. When your joints and your ability to move them in the most common patterns have suboptimal health, then it is likely you are going to experience pain, stiffness, sluggishness, and decreased performance in life. But the good news is that from a training perspective, we have the ability to change so long as we approach our movement with the right intention and prescription. In my years of training, I've come back to these six patterns repeatedly with clients and myself when I or we run into injuries, pain, and performance obstacles. Nothing about the human body is simple in practice. But taking a step back to propose theoretical models of how to approach the human body in simple ways, it can guide our focus and help us understand what problems we need to solve within each person and within each athlete. So today's framework is really a three-step process inside of training. It helps us address movement patterns that capture so much of what the joints of our bodies should be able to do optimally. Within functional bodybuilding programs, I tend to go for consistent touches and maintenance of these areas while we simultaneously work on endurance, getting stronger, and looking good. My approach is that through a combination of strengthening these patterns and with movements that explore full range of motion under load while simultaneously prepping and expanding those ranges of motion with optimal warmups and cool downs, we are gonna be able to bulletproof our joints by having a strong, well-balanced movement pattern. So today I'm gonna to show you how to combine strengthening and lengthening. And ultimately we're gonna bridge the gap so that movement and strength training can replace your mobility program. See, if done correctly, the right intention and quality movement pairings like the ones that follow are gonna help your joints achieve robust function, maintain them for a long time to come. So say goodbye to an entirely separate mobility routine that you have to do on the side and focus on these steps ahead. There are three main areas that I'm gonna cover for each movement pattern today. Number one, movement pattern activation. These are movements that we prescribe in functional bodybuilding as warm-up activities they help to prime and prep the movement pattern for training. When performed with the correct intention, we can expand the range that will carry over to training, where you're gonna reinforce the strength of your joints in that range. Furthermore, these movements enhance the mind-muscle connection for these movement patterns. Concept number two is positional strength training. I often refer to these in our program as strength balance or positional strength movements, since the goal is really twofold. One, we're gonna try and build top end strength while at the same time prioritizing end range strength, positional improvements in our mobility and balance of our joints in all degrees of range of motion. And then the last one, number three, pattern specific passive static stretching or lengthening. And this is best suited for when you're done with your resistance training for the day or within your cool down. Here we're gonna hold very specific positions that give us the most bang for our buck to improve our flexibility. Now, before I go any further, don't forget to jump down to the description below and download the free PDF that breaks down each of these movement patterns into 20 to 30 minute training sessions that will hit activation, strength, and lengthening of each with complete reps, sets, and rest periods. So go grab that right now. As I introduce these movement patterns, pay attention to the fact that we aren't calling out specific muscle groups as much as we're describing shapes and positions the body is taking. The muscles that are targeted, stretched, strengthened, and altered by these protocols are vast and many. A single pattern like global flexion might involve hamstrings, calves, gluteals, low back, upper back, cervical spinal muscle, muscles, so much. Don't get caught up in the specific muscles. Instead, focus on the shapes, and the positions and the muscles will take care of themselves. Lastly, range without strength or strength without range is less ideal than the combination of both. 
if your desire is to be pain-free or improve your life performance. So always keep that in the back of your mind as you perform these movements. Hey, I'm getting a great stretch here, but I don't feel that strong in this position. I feel so strong here, but I can tell I have another inch or two left of me in this range of motion. So you got to find that sweet spot between the two. All right, let's dive into the patterns. Pattern number one, hinging and global flexion. Hey, do you have a stiff low back? You got issues with your mid or upper back? Let's begin with one of the most common mobility patterns in the world, bending over, touching your toes. We're gonna look at this in two ways, with a rounded back and with a flat back. Both are valuable and help us target different parts of our backside and our posterior chain. In an age when everyone wants to overcomplicate pain solutions and stretching, sometimes just touching your toes can be pretty powerful. We're gonna activate with the Jefferson Curl. This move helps to emphasize great spinal flexion and control. You'll get a great stretch in your upper back, lower back, lower legs, Keep loading light and move slowly. For positional strength, we're using the deficit Romanian deadlift. With a flat back and a deficit, this position in this positional strength hinging exercise is gonna allow us to take our hamstrings to a deep range of motion. We can create stronger end range positions with this movement. So don't go past a point where you can control your flat back and focus on that great stretch in the back of your legs. And for your passive stretch, we're doing a forward fold. Finally, with straight legs, just fold forward. Hang out there for two minutes and try not to fidget too much. Just let gravity do the work. Eventually, you'll want to progress to have your palms flat on the floor. Next up, shoulder extension. Ever feel like the front of your shoulder gets a little bit hot when you're doing push-ups or dips or bench pressing? We might have a situation in which your shoulder extension has been limited or it's weak. So let's dig into it. We're gonna activate. We're gonna activate with a movement called the skin the cat and a regressed version of that. Hanging skin the cats are an advanced activation drill and require great strength and flexibility. That's why I'm keeping my feet relatively close to the floor and planted on the floor throughout most of these. You'll see in the regressed version that I'm showing that it can be done on a set of low rings by just about anyone. Now remember, this shouldn't be completely passive. You do wanna feel like you are controlling the full rotation of your shoulder through this movement. For positional strength, we're doing bar dips. I like using the dip bars for dips since they have a lot more stability than rings. And as a result, they're gonna allow you to work deeper ranges of motion to build end range strength. If you need to use some assistance with your feet or a band, that can help to get you into deeper ranges of motion without you feeling vulnerable at the end range. Think about getting your shoulders to drop past your elbows as far as you safely can. Now for your passive stretch, we're using the bench dip or the same movement, the bar dip, and we're gonna hold the bottom stretch position. In either variation that I'm showing, the aim is to get passive, uh, most, mostly passive at the bottom of the dipping position. So unlike the positional strength example before, where you're gonna be getting to the bottom of the position, supporting yourself, and then pushing yourself back up, now we want you to just get to this bottom position, find a supported position with your legs so that you can start to relax your shoulders and remain relatively passive for up to two minutes. All right, squatting pattern. So do you have knee pain when you squat? Do you find yourself getting a pinching feeling in the front of your hip when you squat? How about low back discomfort uh, as a product of tight hips? None of these things should be you should be feeling. None of them are normal when you squat. Squatting should be able to make you feel better in all of these positions and all of these areas, so long as we get full range, get strong, and do it with the right intention. So for activation, we're doing reverse Nordics or the regress version, which would be an assisted reverse Nordic or a heel sit. This time we're focusing on the quads with this series of squatting pattern movements. The reverse Nordic is a powerful way to take the front of the legs and the knees through a deep range of motion, a deep stretch, and really drive some blood to the quads. That regress version of the heel sit is going to be more focused on just getting the range through the knees, and it's not gonna put as much tension on the quads as the reverse Nordic would. For positional strength, I like the cyclist squat. 
By elevating the heels and squatting with a vertical torso, the knees will naturally drive forward over the toes. The combination will allow for a deep range of motion on your squat, in the hips and in the knee bend, and will develop great end range strength for the quads and the tissues around the knees. And for your passive stretch, the best bang for your buck one I can come up with is the couch stretch. Proper positioning for this stretch looks like getting the knee further back towards the wall, or in this case, the squatting rig that I'm using to support my leg. As you improve your mobility, and additionally, you'll want to start opening up fully at the hip with a vertical torso too. A two minute passive stretch per side in this position will open up the quads and the hip flexors tremendously. Okay, now we're gonna look at hip rotation with hinging. So have you ever thought, hey, I have, I have tight IT bands. Do you have that dreaded butt wink when you squat? If so, there's a good chance that you have really tight glutes and you've gotta do some approaches to help you unlock them and to get them strong in longer ranges of motion. So for activation, I like the seated good morning. Finding effective ways to stretch and strengthen the glutes can be the ticket to unlocking knee and low back pain. So this area can get tight from all the sitting we do in modern life. For the seated good morning, you can perform this with dumbbells or a bar. Make sure your feet are slightly in front of your knees. And as you're hinging forward, the goal is to bring your abdominals down towards the bench if you're loaded with a bar or if you're loading with the dumbbells, you just try and get your torso as close to horizontal as you can before coming back up. For positional strength, I like the curtsy drop lunge. Lunges are always a great exercise to train the glutes, and this particular variation adds range of motion with the step deficit as well as some rotation with the directionality of how you're stepping behind your leg. By rotating the hips slightly and dropping down with each repetition, you get a great end range glute stretch and strengthening. And for the passive stretch here, we're doing something called the elevated bench pigeon. And this variation of the classic pigeon pose is the best that I've ever seen. It supports the knee at any level of mobility. The more mobile that you get, the flatter the bench can become. But even those with, without great mobility can get into a safe and effective stretch by using this movement. Hold it for two minutes on each side and it will dramatically open up your glutes. All right, we're gonna look at hip adduction and some single leg squatting now. Have you ever strained your groin or inner thigh? Do you look like a twisted pretzel when you try and do the butterfly stretch? Do you see someone doing the middle splits and think to yourself, I would snap in half if I tried that? Well, here's how you can approach making those better across the board. First, we're gonna activate with something called the assisted low switch Cossack squat. This activation drill is pretty demanding. Not only will you get full mobility benefits from the traditional Cossack squat, and that includes your inner thigh, your hip, knees, and ankles, but you're gonna get this additional act of sliding across the bottom position of this exercise, which really helps us open up and explore the hip socket and internal and external rotation. Really use your assistance from the ring through any portion of the range that feels a little bit grindy and try and smooth it out so that it looks like you're seeing. Now for positional strength, we're gonna stick with the Cossack squat, but we're gonna do a goblet or plate loaded Cossack squat. Strengthening with the Cossack squat will achieve the same mobility components as that activation drill I just demonstrated. However, with the loading, we can potentially enhance the stretch even further. The placement of the kettlebell or the plate in front of the body is gonna act counterbalance, and it's gonna also allow you to keep your torso really upright with better balance and therefore a deeper stretch. Now for your passive stretch, we're doing the assisted middle split. The middle split is just the position we need to spend time in under some load in order to get stronger and more flexible in it. Now finding a way to do that, that can be tough. The best way I have found is to set this up for success with a support in front of us that you can easily use your hands or your arms to brace yourself with. Let a little bit of your body weight off by holding yourself up with your arms Add more resistance by taking some of the pressure off of your arms, settle in for two minutes, and you'll feel yourself sink deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay, we're finishing up with shoulder flexion. Life doesn't demand much reaching over your head with full range of motion. Flexing the shoulder or raising your arms overhead is therefore a position a lot of people struggle with. 
Since we don't use it, we tend to lose it. So let's look at ways we can bring it back. Your activation drills today are the prone banded shoulder extension or the shoulder bridge press. Two variations of activation. The shoulder bridge press is much more advanced, so consider starting with the prone banded variation to get going. For your positional strength, we're going with the cross bench dumbbell pullover. This classic bodybuilding exercise for the lats has great carryover to, to positional strength. In particular, focus on a pause in this movement at the end of the range of motion. The ideal form here would be you got to have both the hips and the elbows below the level of the bench when you're reaching fully overhead at the end of the repetition. And lastly, for your passive stretch, we're going to do the anterior line stretch. This stretch brings together hip extension and shoulder flexion. I love it because all the tissue that is getting stretched in this position could be holding you back from that optimal overhead reach. Now, by no means was today a fully exhaustive list of all the movement patterns that your body can go through. I also want to acknowledge that I am not an expert in the field of joint anatomy and physiology. Heck, over the course of the many years that I've done this, I've tried to absorb and learn as much as I can from other physical therapists and exercise specialists. My goal has been to compile practical solutions to common strength and range of motion deficits that I have had alongside many, many clients of my own. This approach for preparing tissues, strengthening joints and muscles with a priority on expanding range of motion, and then finally hitting very potent static stretches to retrain our brains to feel safe in these expanded and strengthened positions has been extremely rewarding for me. I hope you'll go download the accompanying PDF in the description below and give one to two of these a try today. Go see for yourself what a little bit of work each week performed with these principles in mind can do to help you overcome pain and improve your life performance with stronger and healthier bodies. And until next time, take care.